Welcome, everyone. This is Our Travel Experiences. I'm your host, Kyle Rasmussen, and today I have another good friend with me, Catherine. Catherine, how are you today? Hello. I'm doing great. I'm so excited to talk about all things travel. Yeah, I'm excited to finally have you on the podcast. I know we've been trying yes. for like multiple weeks now to make this happen. I know. I'm always, I'm barely in the country, you know, so <laughs> hard, it's hard to schedule things, when, but I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm glad it, glad it finally worked out and we can, we can talk about some travel. Um, so we, we met through FTLO, which I've now mentioned like a million times on here and they've gotten a lot of free advertising, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you've, you've been on quite a few FTLO trips, haven't you? Yes. I just, uh, when we came back from Cuba, that was my sixth. So I started traveling with them in 2018. I had just done some research online and you know with our age group it's, everyone's plans are always all over the place and it's hard to get everybody aligned for a travel date and I had just they did a great job with their website their marketing was amazing I talked to uh, Michaela who's now um, you know like even higher at the company and just said I want to go like oh, this looks great I just want to go to this place during this time this works for me I'm extroverted I'm fun I love meeting new people um I love traveling so let's do it so I did Barcelona in the south of France in 2018 and then I've done I did the Laplands uh I did Greece uh I did Croatia Morocco when we first met our amazing group and then Cuba and I have Slovenia in the fall so all of all uh, different types of experiences yeah that's amazing and that's that's kind of all over the place too I know I like to be able to go to like I, I did Croatia um last summer then the European summer trips are always so fun but I love the off the beaten path and that's why like FTLO does such a great job because I never would have been able to plan that itinerary for the Laplands you know traveling mm -hmm. between Norway um Sweden Finland and Norway um and same with Morocco you know like it's so great that they have such a wonderful itinerary always an amazing group leader um because I am a goer not a planner <laughs> Which is why I also love FTLO because it's enough structure for me where I just read through and I'm like, that sounds great. Love it. Love it. Love it. Just tell me where to be. And, uh, you know, I, I like that. So, yeah, that's awesome. It, it, it does make it so easy. Yeah, you don't really have to worry about much on those trips at all. You just, it's, you could just pick what you, you, you pick where you want to go, when you want to go. And then you meet wonderful friends such as you and our group along the way. And you have memories and laughs for a lifetime. I think one of my favorite, probably memories of my life, but especially with our trip to Morocco was like the night when we were in the Sahara after coming in on the camels and having, seeing a beautiful sunset and having a nice happy hour. And you, me, Michaela, Becca, Sarah, just laughing so much and just having, just having so many belly giggles. It just was like one of my favorite memories of life. Just being like, this is so cool that I'm having this amazing, fun experience with such great people in such an amazing place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree. That's that's one of those moments where you're just like, I can't believe this is happening right now. Like I'm in the Sahara Desert, just got right. laughing. <laughs> Is this happening? Like, and seeing the stars and the moon rise. I was actually showing, and I'm also FTLO's best salesperson. I just gave an eighth, their eighth, eighth referral since 2020. Um, my sister's friend had reached out to me, um, and she just signed up for this, the um, Scandinavia trip. But last night I was talking with, uh, I was at a, a work happy hour, and I was talking to a new coworker, and she was like, oh, I heard you travel a lot. And I was showing her my pictures but i'm like yeah i was like i i love it. they do such a great job so. yeah that's that's awesome um it's it's so much fun and honestly like you know some of those places like morocco and cuba i feel like it's necessary to to go with a group like fglo to actually experience those places right and i trust them obviously you know what i mean i think they do a great job of also making it um, so culturally enriching, but also an authentic experience. Like when we were in Morocco and we went to Sarah's friend's home and they welcomed us and they gave us tea and they fed us and they told us stories and we made the pastilla. Um, like those kinds of things you don't get with other groups, you know, mm -hmm. they do a very good job of making it like a localized, like 
you know, not, not a tourist, but a traveler experience. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, that, that's what really drew me to them was like, yes, you're doing some of the highlight touristy things that like, if you're there, you got to do kind of thing, but it's a lot more like culturally enriching. Like you're, you're going off the beaten path and learning about what the culture is actually like. And I think that's, that's so cool. Yes. From the horse's mouth, you know, from the locals, from the people that are there. I think that's mm -hmm. my favorite thing. Actually going anywhere is just like, go to the local pub and drink the local drink, you know, try and try and enrich yourself as much as you can in the, in the culture. Yeah. yeah and that's, I mean, that, that's what being a traveler is all about, in my opinion. I, I don't know. Did you see, um, I was going to text our group. Did you see um, how that new movie on Netflix, uh, A Tourist Guide to Love? I think that's what it's Ooh. called. Well, I will watch it. Okay, you got to watch it. Let me know what you think. Okay. Um, love. What's that? that? A, a Tourist's Guide to Love? I think, yeah. Or, a yeah, something like, I think it's that. A Tourist's Guide to Love. Um, Search for it. With uh, Rachel Lee Cook is in it. Um, definitely, you know, rom com type of movie, but oh, I love that. Uh, really good, like travel, uh, like metaphors and things in there, and it was it was really cool. That's amazing. Um, I, I I mean, rom com. You got you had me at rom com, so I love, <laughs> love that. Um, I actually also just watched um, the. It's with Eugene Levy. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, it's the like resentful traveler or something. I don't He's know. So he goes to the Laplands and he also goes to uh, the Maldives and there's somewhere else. But my mom had actually showed it to me and she was like, oh, Catherine, you should watch this. It's about travel. And, but he, he's like the nervous traveler. He's sticky. I don't know. I don't know why they did it this way. But I was like, I went to the Laplands. It was so cool. And to be able to watch him go do it. Like, I love anything travel, those kinds of documentaries to mm -hmm. see people, um, places and things. So that's that's another good one. Even though like Eugene Levy's funny, but he's not a brat about it. But whatever, yeah. he's supposed to be like a cranky traveler. He doesn't like being cold. The total <laughs> opposite of us in our group. Like, so I don't know why they chose him, but it was a good show. The Maldives one too. Oh my god, it just looked like another world. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I like those shows. I like um, Zac Efron's show too. Uh, Down to Earth. Oh, yes. I actually I such great things about that. I need to watch that one. Yeah, it's, it's a lot about like sustainable living and sustainable travel and stuff like that. Um, oh. It's yeah, it's a really good one. I love that one. Yeah. Any anything that I that I do and I watch, I'm like, it gives me that wonderlust again. And I just yeah. can't, I can't. I'm like, OK, now I got to plan my next trip. Like, where am I going? You know, to give me something to look forward to uh yeah on the same way and then my bank account's like hey you need to stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i know the feeling but you know my my motto is travel is the only thing you can buy that makes you richer so yeah. i've never looked back at a trip and been like oh i'm so mad i i was like oh i spent a, like a thousand dollars over that i wanted to or something i remember one of the first trips i did when i was 26 i'm very close with my grandmother and i actually got um the travel bug from her pretty much i i lived with her for two years in high school and she would travel all the time my grandfather had passed away when i was in high school but that was not gonna you know, end her world and her life. So she traveled. She did the, one of the first trips she did when um, I was in high school was, well, not the first, but she went to the bottom of uh, South America and did the tour of all that and then um, popped over to Antarctica. So I was like, this is amazing. At the time she was, she's 84 now. So this was like when she was 75, but I, yes. it was just so amazing. And I, I always have looked up to her with that and she loves to travel. And so then when I was, you know, I was got into sales and I had, you know, after making money for the first four years in New York City, very tough and li living at home. Uh, but I moved to the city and then in 2017, I had enough money to like, go on a trip and my first trip. And I said, Grammy, where in the world do you want to go? Let's go. You and me. I want to do it. She first Alaska and I was like, OK, love it. But no, I want to get out of the country. We need to go out of the country. And so I said, um, Vietnam because I studied abroad in Australia and 
we went to Bali, which was amazing and incredible. Um, and then when we came back, uh, we stayed for five months in Australia and we had these other counterparts, these Brits that did a year long program and they went to Vietnam and their pictures were just unbelievable. And I fell in love with Southeast Asia after going to Bali. So I said to Grammy, I was like, let's do, I was like, I want to go to Vietnam, like as far away as, like, I don't know. I was like, the world, the world's our oyster. Let's go, let's go somewhere. And she was like, all right, I'm in. So we went to Vietnam and Cambodia together in 2017. Wow. And everyone, everyone keeps thinking I'm her daughter because she just looks so great for her age. Uh, but she's poor and she just got her knee replaced a couple weeks ago. And I helped her last week and I was like, Grammy, let's go on another trip. Once your knee is ready, we, we won't be taking the 15 hour flight that we did to uh, Vietnam. I think maybe like Mexico City. So it's something that's oh, close enough flight wise to, with her knee, but yeah, I really, I'm very close with my grandmother and I think I got my love for travel and just exploring new places, meeting new people, understanding new cultures from her. So I hold, I hold her very close and near, near and dear to my heart. Yeah, that's so cool. And it's so cool that you guys have, have gotten to do that together too. Um, you know, I, I think that's always fun when you get to go on those major life, you know, life changing trips with your family too. Yeah, it is. And and I'm so fortunate to have her in my life. You know, she's 84, but she's killing it in life. You know, she's she's ready to go and she has such a zest for life. And it's really special, the relationship we have with her. But most people might not even still have their grandparents. So to be able to share those special memories that as cheesy as it sounds, you know, last a lifetime, like we just joke and we like I, when I was in the hospital last week with her, as she was recovering we were talking about our Vietnam trip and she's like, oh my God, do you remember when we took the, we got the tuk-tuk and we went into Ho Chi Minh City and we got Thai food and it was so good and I was so scared, but you said it was going to be fine. And then we, <laughs> one of our other favorite memories was um, when we went to Angkor Wat in, um, uh, in Cambodia. Oh, yeah. We watched the sunrise. Uh, it was oh, just God. absolutely beautiful. So reminiscing on those things with her and I know it's special for her. It's certainly special for me. Um, but yeah, I just, I love being able to share that experience with her in such a unique culture, you know, it mm -hmm. was incredible. Where's your next trip? Yeah, actually, um, I'm going to ask you a question here about Vietnam and Cambodia because, oh. um, I am headed that direction in, uh, in November. I'm going to trek up to Everest base camp. Oh um, my God. That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. That's that's been a bucket list for mine is is to go see, you know, Mount Everest, the yeah. you know, the tallest mountain in the world. Um, but I I wanted to, right? like, to like to do that. What's that? So the base camp. Yeah, the right. base camp. So you trek up to the base camp, which is a hard enough hike in and of itself. Okay. It's like a multiple, like I think the whole trek is like. Uh, two weeks in total to get up and down wow so it's not like easy because base camp i think is at like seventeen thousand feet or a little bit more than that wow that's really oh. high i went skydiving at fourteen thousand feet <laughs> that's no joke yeah it's uh <laughs> it's gonna be a fun challenge um, but i'm i'm excited for it um well, when, but anyways when is that sorry just last question on yeah that's uh that's in november um, oh my gosh, so I can't, I cannot wait to see the pictures and hear all about it. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. <laughs> I'll be living uh, vicariously through you. Yes, and same like with all your travels, I, I love seeing all the travel pics from everyone, uh, especially in our group. It's yeah. it's a lot of fun. It is. It's so nice. Yeah, actually, I I have a, a friend who I met on the Colombia trip that I did um, before Morocco. And now he, uh, my friend that I met, Tommy, he's in Morocco right now doing the FTLO trip there. Oh, great. Does he have Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. He has Sarah. Perfect. So he was like, yeah, Sarah says hi. And I was like, oh, yeah, I miss Sarah. She's awesome. She's the sweetest. I, I tell so many people about how incredible she is and what she's trying to do as a woman in tourism in Morocco and how she's just, and I told, and I told so many people too, I'm like, I, I never felt unsafe. There was no need to feel safe, but like she's tiny, but she's mighty. Like she, mm -hmm. runs, she runs that ship and 
what she's trying to do. Like when we went, she was also going up for that awards um, test for the best travel group leader and what she does, especially um, like on the trips, all of the, the stores that we went to were female owned businesses. And she's really trying to make her stamp on the tourism industry in Morocco as a female group leader. I just think she's such a boss ass. I don't know. Can I can say that. I don't know. I'm not that. Yeah, okay. she's kind of amazing, but she really is. I she's such a treasure to me. I need her to come. We need her to come to the states so we can hang out. I know. Honestly, we should we should try to make that happen. I know. Um, I'll follow up with her. I'll I'll write to her and say we we're talking about you today, and we need you to come back. <laughs> we not come back. We need you to come to. We need you to yeah. come to the states so we can hang out again. I miss her. Yeah, yeah, she was the best. And, and like you said, what she's doing there, you know, in in Morocco, with, where the culture, like, you know, females are not, it, it's a little bit tougher for them, right. you know, to, to make their way there um, and to see what she's doing. I mean, it's it's incredible. She She's not uh, backing down at all. She's going after everything that she wants. Absolutely That's not. So cool. That's the best way to put it. And like, and when we went to her friend's home, you know, the, and her friend was studying in college to try and get a degree and work. Like, it's it's just, it's very inspiring, especially just, you know, with the way women are necessarily treated, but in, in, that, in that society right now, you know, she's like, I don't want to be a standard Moroccan woman who just stays at home with the kids in the kitchen and this. She's like, I want to, I want to be involved. I want to, I want to change, I want to change tourism for Morocco. I want to make a mark so we love sarah we yeah. stay <laughs> definitely anyone going to morocco you gotta get sarah yes. as a two yes. good yeah sure absolutely another plug for Mor for uh for morocco and for sarah <laughs> yeah <laughs> did, did we ever hear back about the award she was going after no i don't know i feel like um we would have you know yeah i don't yeah. remember when the deadline was for that I know I put I put my my notes in and she had a lot like there were a lot of people. It's like a global contest. Yeah, I didn't realize that. It's huge. Yeah. But so. she's she's number one in our hearts, you know. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, and Ivan was great, too, in Cuba. I mean, he's oh still God. messaging us every once in a while with the pictures. <laughs> I also tell every I, I'm always talking about all of my events. But I always tell people about him. I was first of all, I was like, I was blown away not only by FTLO and how well they planned the trip, especially since Cuba just reopened its doors to, to U.S. tourists. But I was blown away by Cuba itself. Like it far exceeded my expectations, and Ivan was just the best. His personality, he's goofy, he's caring, he's fun. He was my salsa dancing partner, by the way, also when we were with Havana Queen. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm with the pro. Like, I, but we 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 worked it out. It was <laughs> I love it. I need, and, and unfortunately, like I've told so many people about our experience in Cuba um, and how eye opening it was and important that, you know, we need to make changes um, with them. It's, you know, everything that we learned about the rations and how everything set up from the government and Cuban people can't even come uh, to the United States. So, yeah. It's just crazy, and I hope I hope now that um, tourism that being opened back up to the U.S. that there can be some more changes that go there when when people experience it and say, you know what, it doesn't have to be like this anymore. You know, we need to make some changes. They certainly deserve it. They're wonderful people. Yeah, yeah, that stuff. I, I feel like especially today, it's just it's dumb. It's just some political stuff at the very Correct. you know top people uh, in the governments. Like nobody else you know cares about any of that anymore no you're absolutely right yeah it's it's sad to see um for sure but i'm glad that you know we got to go there and can come back and share that with people and share you know what what it's actually like there and um, right you know promote it promote it to the rest of the world too yeah. I wrote, I wrote FTLO, like, I, again, they did such a great job. And I, with the review, especially because it was their first inaugural trip, I wrote such a long letter of, like, this was amazing, this was amazing. Um, and, like, also just ways to kind of even enhance the trip of, like, with the donations and everything. Because with, I, I didn't really understand the extent of it. And the, the toys that I had was because of a wonderful mother knows that the, the kids with the Embarco, they, they don't have as many 
sports, games, things, kids to play, toys to play with. Um, so I, my mom had sent that to me through Amazon, the trucks that I gave to those little boys, but everyone else was like, Oh my God, I forgot to get that. And so I was like, you know, put it on the packing list because people will forget, but it's hard because once we were there, it's like, you can't go to target. You can't yeah. go to the grocery store. So you're just kind of at the well. So I, and when I actually, I went to, uh, when Becca, Leah and I went to the, uh, the New York happy hour, um, when FTLO was there, I talked to one of the one of the team members and I said, like the same exact thing. I'm like, I in the feedback, I listed all of that so it can be helpful for the for the group moving forward and the collection bag at the end. Because Gloria, as you know, she was like, We will take anything, you know, so we're happy to have it, even if it's half used bottles of soap, shampoo, conditioners. So I, I told them I was like, set aside a um, a bag at the end of the trip that everyone, you know, we're fortunate enough that we can go replenish anything at CVS, you know, so they don't yeah. have that, that bill, you know, it's just, it's crazy. So um, they were like, those notes were so helpful. And she's like, we are going to move the packing list or the donations to the packing list because everybody lives by the packing list, you know, on those last few days. So then, and that just makes me like, again, like we have to buy the visa to support the Cuban people. And it's just like, if that's the least I can do to try and help, you know, and make yeah. some impact, I I really care about making that better for them because they're such wonderful people. Gloria, Andrea, Andre, <laughs> they were the best. Yeah, they were awesome. They, uh, I think I shared this with some someone else on the podcast, but you know, having been to a, a number of the Latin American countries. You know, they're all very friendly people, um, but Cuba was like on a different level. Like these are the most friendly people I have ever met in my life. They are. And I thought they were so welcoming. I had a lot of people like ask me once I was back, they were like, did you feel safe? And I'm like, yeah. Like, again, I obviously feel very safe with Yvonne, who's with us the whole time. But mm -hmm. I feel like in a way, because I feel that people are, people are afraid that they hate Americans because of how things are. But I didn't feel that way at all. I felt that they were very, so warm, welcoming, wanting us to be there, wanting us to experience Cuban life. I never felt safe or uncomfortable. And even, you know, farm daddy, the cute farm daddy guy, he was wearing a Boston Red Sox hat. You know, he was like, I, I, I love watching U.S. sports, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I just hope that it, in the next five years, things can change. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, I, I think, you know, as time changes, it, it will change, but it's a slow moving process, unfortunately. Right. I know. And we're doing we're doing as much as we can, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still laughing at the farm, Daddy. I love that you guys still <laughs> talk about and that. So the, the, I will say the Cuban men are quite beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing I told everyone. It's like they have these light eyes. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> we had we had very uh very attractive tour guides, <laughs> tour guides, farm daddies who show us. I was like, wow, they I just ooh. <laughs> hubba, hubba. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, funny. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, with uh I, I guess in other places you've been to, um, you know, what have been, what have, what's your experience has been like and what have the, like, you know, the tour guides uh, and the people been like as well? Yeah. Would you say with FTLO or? Uh, just in general, like, you know, a few highlights from your various trips. I think for me, when I was, um, when I was studying abroad and we went to Bali and that was my first time going to Asia um, and I was so excited but Bali is a very different style place. And so there was a group of us uh, from my college. There were 20 of us from Loyola that went. But because there were so many of us and we couldn't fit on all on one flight, myself and uh, my two friends, Lauren and Vinny, who just recently got married this past August, um, my very dear friends. So we went a day before. So it was the three of us in Bali. And we were shocked. I mean, you know, some things where, you know, you just have to keep your, like, you're, you're in such a different type of culture. And mm -hmm. 
thing for me, like it took me about three days to feel comfortable, but understand. And I think that a lot of times, like you never want to be that ugly American tourist, you know, that just is yeah. loud and is like, this is the way we do it in America. So it needs to be done everywhere in every other country. You know, I think that that trip to Bali, especially that first day when it was just the three of us. And, you know, this is before we had, I feel like I'm so old when I say this, but we only, we had flip phones. This was before like iPhone really became a thing and you can have technology and connection to anyone in the world at any time. You know, we really only had flip phones to T9 text each other, let alone like it was an emergency to call like my parents or, you know what I mean? So, but for that, I think by the end of the day, I mean, you, you just, what I do and what, what everyone should do is just take a step back, listen to how the culture goes, understand how they operate and how they move. And then you assimilate, you know, I think for me, that was one of the most um, pivoting, piv pivotal kind of experiences where I was like, wow, this was a culture shock for day one to two, but by day five, you know, with the locals you know we're in these other bars they're showing their lovely people and i'm like this is this was a great experience for me to have to be like to sit back and you know you're the minority you're like they don't give a shit oh sorry i do not mean to curse they do not yeah. give a shit that um you know that you're american you're in their country so you need to understand how everything works with them. And ever since Bali, I was like, I cannot wait to get back to Southeast Asia. I just love, love, loved it. And that's why that's why my next trip when I was with Grammy and I was like, Grammy, anywhere in the world. And I was like, let's go back to Southeast Asia. I love it there. And I'm dying to go back. Um, I would love to, I was actually, there was, obviously with the recession and everything, um, plans have been put on hold, but my company that I work with um, has a work from other offices program. So there's 11 mm. offices worldwide and I was dying to go to the Singapore one. So maybe once things find, you know, improve in the economy, they'll pick that back up. But that's like such a fun perk for me at my job right now um, to be able to utilize that travel component um, and you know yeah. Before. yeah that's awesome yeah okay you'll definitely have to watch that movie then because it takes place in vietnam oh so great. You'll, you'll probably see a lot of things that you visited too oh i i just i love it i, I would go back my friend steph I, you didn't meet steph but uh she was somebody who um signed up she, we were best friends from working together from years ago and she's always wanted to do an ftlo trip and she just got back from the vietnam ftlo trip like a week ago and I, I'm getting together with her uh, next week for dinner to hear all about it. Um, <laughs> but I'm so happy and glad she went and I just cannot like her pictures were insane. And she said it was, there was a smaller group. I think it was like six people and it was all. Oh, wow. So that I'm just really excited to hear about that. So any, anybody else's, and she's one of the eight people I've referred since 2020. So I don't know. I don't know why I, I worked for her. Well, if I could, <laughs> everybody like, like, oh my god, I went to like, I, where did when when did you go to this place? Where are you going next? Like, how was it? Um, I feel like I, I'm not an influencer by any means, but I'm like, I I'm like, use my code. I'm like, I need a code or something. Yeah, you should look into that. I think they have that uh, program with they that have referral thing. So like each time um, I give a referral, I get a hundred dollars off a trip. Okay it so they do have that and i always you know cash in on that but i just love to be able to spread the word and have people you know exp have the wonderful experiences that we've had you know and just keep going back for more and when i actually so started traveling with ftlo which was in 2018 the first trip was bar south of france and the company had only been around for two years they started in 2016 and at that time in 2018 when i went um they only had uh, European trips. It was really like Barcelona, South of France. They had Tuscany and Rome. But I remember on the trip, they are our group leader, Seth, who is like FTLO's best group leader ever um, and has, has started a new new role um, from FTLO. But he said, you know, the company's having some really exciting updates. We're expanding to the, to the continents that we go to. So to have started with FTLO in 2018, where... It was just a few um, trips in Europe to now they have Asia, they have Africa, they have the Laplands, they have they have South America, you know, and South America is more on my list to be able to 
um, get to some of those places. So like maybe I do the Columbia trip, but it's just so cool to see how the company has grown and in a way grow with them. But I'm like, I remember when you guys first started and you only had a couple trips in Europe and like, look where you guys are now. You offer a Vietnam and Japan, you know, all the way around on the other side of the world. It's just yeah. incredible. Yeah, even through the pandemic, I feel like they still really expanded a lot and it's really taken off the last couple of years too. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I actually had something for South Africa and then um, COVID happened. So obviously I did not get to go on that trip, but hopefully, you know, somewhere down the line. Um, but yeah, they, they, um, I really like uh, Tara, who's the CEO uh, and Michaela's her sister. And she, Michaela was the first person I had talked to, but I just, I love her vision for the company and even the, uh, the sojourn I've, I've even looked into that, um, which is, more like a study abroad for both where you can go to another country for a month, like a work from other continents kind of thing. Um, but they have many different cultural aspects that are woven into, and you work, you know what I mean? Like it's like whatever job you have, if you're fully remote, you can go do that. Um, and I'd love to be able to do that. Maybe once I'm a little bit longer into my um, job that I would try and do that. But that like that's such another great cool concept mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's awesome it's i don't know they I, they've really uh found a really great niche i think they have that they have. <laughs> it's always wonderful people i tell people i was like uh, and this uh girl grace that i was talking to last week she was like i'm a little nervous to go on this ftlo trip like can i talk to you and hear your experience and i was like listen there's people, I'm obviously very extroverted, very loud, big personality, but it's not like 12 Catherines, you know, like every single group I've been on, which would be a lot, um, every single group that I've been on, there's been a great mix of personalities, introverted, extroverted. So you'd be surprised. And that's why I try and tell people though, even though it's coming from me, I'm like, don't think that it's just super extroverted people to go on this. And I always say like to, to Grace, this girl I was speaking to last week, I'm like, if you come back from a trip, and you have one person that you'd want to see again or talk to after the trip, that's a win, you know? And I think yeah. we've, we've been very lucky with our Moroccan group that, you know, we still all keep in touch and still travel together. But I think as a rule, like if you just meet one person at the end of the trip, you know, that you, you still want to stay in contact, that's awesome. Like you can say like, I went to a new country, I tried new things and I met a new friend. Like it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think that's part of the reason why I wanted to go on those trips was to meet other people that were, you know, similar to me um, who wanted to travel, but maybe didn't have like, you know, a significant, significant other to travel with or something like right. that. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, now I've made, you know, lifelong friends. Um, I mean, yeah, I know. lots of great people over the, I think I've done four trips now. Oh, nice. That's great. If you do two more, they'll send you that champagne glass, which was so nice. Oh, that looked cool. <laughs> it was so nice. I was. They had reached out to me and they were like, oh my gosh, we want to like, thank you so much for traveling with us so much. We want to send you a gift. I thought it was going to be like a t-shirt or a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and I open it up and it's this beautiful, lovely champagne glass with their, their logo of the, of the world map and F for the love of travel. I'm like, this is really nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. Maybe the six. I my, uh, yeah, I just got my three trip gift. They got me a like a wine bottle opener and then some stickers and stuff like that. So, oh, nice! I, I feel like that's cool. That's a cool little like extra extra thing, you know? Yeah, and it and it was so nice. Like they wrote like a per, a personalized note, you know, a handwritten yeah. note. Yeah. It was simple, but it was like, hey, Catherine, thanks so much for traveling with us. We can't wait to, you know, have you on our next experience. But I, you know, hand handwritten notes is a lost art that I still love to be able to yep. do when like send birthday cards, wedding stuff. But that personalized touch just makes it even better. So, I'm like, yep. Can't wait yep. for something. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah. and, and hopefully the Turkey 24 dates, 2024 dates will come out soon. So we can get that on the books. Yeah, definitely. We got a we got a good one planned already, but we do with Jordan. I'm I'm excited for that one. They're like those are the kind of the, again like I never in a million years could try and plan a Jordan trip for us. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like places where I'm like, I am safe in your hands. Take yeah. Over, I see the pictures. I read the itinerary. I'm like, yep, sounds great. 
where do I, where, tell me where to be and at what time and I will show up in Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. Yeah. It's, it's, those are the kind of places where it's like, you know, I really could possibly, you know, do this on my own and like find a tour guide to help me out and that sort of thing. But it's like, yeah, this would be more fun and easier. And, and I feel like a better experience with, if I go like with a group with uh, like FTLO, um, and that's the way I felt in Cuba and, and Morocco too. I mean, it's just like, I could do this, but it's way better this way. I trust the experts, you know, yeah. like it, it stresses me out because then I get all nervous. I'm like, am I doing the right things? I need to make sure I'm hitting all the right spots. And I'm like, no, I, I love to travel because it's a way for me to relax. And enjoy. You know, some people, like again, our friend, our friend, Lauren, she's, she's the planner. Some people really enjoy putting itineraries together so everybody's different, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, where uh, where did you study abroad in Australia? Um, I studied abroad in Melbourne, and that's with the uh, Aussie accent. But Melbourne, yeah. Melbourne, if you're saying it in an American accent, but I that was 2012. So oh my god, like 11 years ago. Oh, I'm so old. But yeah, I studied abroad in uh, Melbourne. But and and our. Um, our group, uh, the college had planned, we were there for a semester. They had planned stuff for us every single weekend. So, I mean, aside from this, my other favorite lifetime memory is um, one of the trips we took into the Outback. We drove 15 mm. hours to the Outback and we climbed a mountain to see the sunset. It really felt like Pride Rock in the Lion King. And <laughs> You also know that nine out of the 10 deadliest animals in the world are found in the outback. So yeah. Try and keep that in the back of your head for, uh, again, for, for uh, reference. And so we watched the sunset in our, our group because there's no lights anywhere. Like, like mm -hmm. any town was so far away. And so our, our tour guide, our Airbnb guy who was there was like, okay, guys, once the sun sets, we got to book it back down because there's no lights once the sun like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're like, oh my god! We <laughs> back to the camp, and we had um, we had s'mores, we had a campfire, and I have never seen so many stars in my life. I mean, it was cool, one of the coolest, unexpected experiences. I was like, oh, the outback, man, be fun. I, I totally underestimated how beautiful and what a special moment it was. And that I've only I've only seen the moon rise a handful of times, but that was the first time we saw the moon rise and I'm just like, this is an incredible experience. So I had a great time in Australia and we did because of the, the groups that we, the trips that we had planned um, each week was each weekend. obviously we were study abroad. So study comes first per se. Mm -hmm. It was maybe a broad study, um, but we went to Sydney. We went to um, Cannes, we, Cannes, we went to Brisbane. The only place we didn't go to was, um, uh, Ayers Rock in Perth, but yeah, you know, we I, we made so, we made so much out of our time. I really felt like we got to see everything. Um, when we were in the Outback, they had karaoke night. So obviously, with, with all these like these people that were in um, in town, and I was just up there singing my heart out every single song. Um, just, oh my. But it was it was the best experience. And I say that my anytime that uh, everyone's like, "What's your fun fact?" That's Australia and I went my fun fact is that I went skydiving and bungee jumping in the same day uh, and I told my wow. mother about it once both of those activities were completed because I knew she would not be happy with me and be nervous so I told her after she was done and she's like honestly thank you I'm okay it's already done I know that but it's like yeah I had I had to do it and I will say bungee jumping is 10 times scarier than skydiving so really okay yeah, I got, I mean, because Scott, we did 14,000 feet, but you've got a trained professional on your back and who's telling you each way to go, but it's handling all the machinery, you know, with the parachute and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but with bungee jumping, you, I was like, I was standing up there and I was like, I'm going to regret this if I don't do it. So I got to do this. I, me and uh, my two friends, we took a tequila shot before doing this. So, so skydiving was at 11 a.m. and then bungee jumping was at four. So with bungee jumping though, I was like, it'll be okay. I just like will look down, you know, like I'll just walk the plank. It was truly like a plank. And they only wrapped my ankles. Like you were, you were there, like it's just crazy. And I was like, just okay, I just don't have to look down. But they're like, no, you actually have to walk to the edge and put your toes over the edge for like safety 
participants. So I'm like, you're kidding me. <laughs> and I, did, I put my little toes over the edge and it was over like a man-made little um, river, I guess you could say. And so they're like, one, two, three. And I'm like, I did it. And I'm just, I, it was, because the it was over the Great Barrier Reef, like oh. a little farther away. And they're like, just pretend you're diving into that water, which was actually very helpful. Um, and you don't always get whiplash if you tuck your chin in to your chest pretty closely. Mm -hmm. But I, I did it, and I was like, I've never felt such a natural ad adrenaline rush. And I was like, I did it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And the funniest <laughs> part about it was there's been, so how they how they unhook your um, – how you the how they unhook you and then send it back up. So this this Australian guy comes paddles and to, once you've stopped dangling, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. you get kind of cradled into this this boat sort of thing. And then he unties it and sends it back up. He's sent, telling me all these different directions, and I'm on such an adrenaline high that I'm like, I can't. I'm not. I I can't. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not listening. So I said to I said to him, I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm not. I, I I can't believe I just did that. I'm not listening to a word you said. And he goes, I was asking for you, nah. and I'm like, no, no, you weren't, because I would have heard that. <laughs> so I that that experience studying abroad in Australia, I also hold very near and dear to my heart. And so many of the people that um, I travel with from my college came back to school, and we we're you know, best friends and still are to this day. And Lauren and Vinny just got married. I was dating for 10 years, you know, so it's, it was a very special time for me. So, and all these travel experiences and, and, and the people, I, the people I share it with is means so much to me. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so awesome. I, I love hearing that. Um, Cause it's, you know, I, I've gotten to feel that as well. And I want that to come across on this podcast of like, these are the kind of feelings that you get when you travel, when you study abroad, when you do these things, like it is such a fulfilling life changing moment to go travel, uh, you know, all over the world. Definitely. I just, it, it, it really as cheesy as it sounds, just fills my soul like that for me. It's like, I, I, I love being able to explore. Um, and, and it just, it just, I feel like my happiest like the picture, the, there's a picture um, that I have from when we were in the with Sunday Islands, which was like so. Mm. Nice. It's apparently like rated one of the like the top eight, ten beaches in the world. But yeah. I like looking at that photo because I'm like I was like truly happy in that moment. You know, like there's there's certain photos that you get captured and and life's tough. You know, you're taking pictures all the time. But I have this one photo there, and I'm like I look at that, and I'm like you no, know, I was like I was truly happy in this moment. So it's just like absolute. It's it's my Instagram photo, my profile picture, yeah. my favorite one. But like, it's just real. Like that's, I, I really love that to be able to look at a picture and be like, wow, in that moment, I was truly fulfilled. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was. You know. Honestly, now that I think about it, like, those are some of the most uh, happiest and and fulfilling moments that I've had in my life. I mean, I've had others outside of traveling too, but. Like there's a lot of them that are from traveling too. Yeah, absolutely. And I just feel like it's, 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 I feel like that everybody des deserves to be able to go and experience this world and experience life and understand uh, what cultures are like outside of America. I do also think it's very important uh, for people to take themselves out of America and be able yeah. to be exposed to other cultures and how other people live. I think it just, for me, it, it, it makes, I'm trying to be like, have that well-roundedness about myself. And honestly, you never know who you might meet because I actually went, um, I mean, Cancun, it's not exactly like super culturally enriching, but uh, when I was just starting in sales at my previous company, um, I was, you know, it was, it was uh, December and I just went to Mexico for like a, a few days or something by myself. And so on this, um, when we were getting transferred to the place we were staying at, I met this wonderful family, this, this, this mom, her husband, and their two kids. They were so cute. They were so nice, lived in New Jersey, had lovely chat. It was a, it was a smaller ish kind of place like resort. So you would see these people all the time. You'd be like, after, you know, we'd see them at dinner, Oh, Hey, how's it going? How's it going? And, you know, just look, like chat about life. There was no work shop talk or anything. And so I get back um, to work and that was December. And then in March that year, 
I'm, I'm, I'm having a meeting. I had cold called this university, this veterinarian university. And so I have a meeting in person with them and I'm sitting across from this woman and it's, it's winter. We're in Jersey. It's snowing. So the context was all over the place. And I just kept looking at this woman. And I was like, how do I know this person? I, she lives near my, my parents' house and my mom knows everybody. So I'm like, maybe I know her through my mom. And so I was thinking, I couldn't even put my finger on it. And all of a sudden she goes, wait a minute. I know you. I met you in Mexico. She was the mob. And turns out she was the marketing department head who handles advertising. And wow. I was so nervous in my pitch because I was just new to sales and trying to remember all this information. So I was taken off so off guard to be like, oh my gosh. I and I, I ended up getting the deal for um forty thousand dollars, which is which which was like a, a lot of money for a local client, but I, I, I feel I, I won that business because she got to meet me before any shop talk and she got to mm -hmm. you know, as a person where if she was like, oh, that girl, Catherine, oh my God, she's a crazy person at the resort. She's a B-I-E-C-H, you know, like she liked me. And I feel like that's it's a lot of the travel that I do do, but it's helped me so much in business to be able to speak to other cultures and experiences that I've had. Yeah. But there, like, there was an actual example of I won business because I met somebody on vacation unknowingly three <laughs> months prior, and she liked me, and basically was like, "She was, yeah, sure, we'll do, we'll do, we'll buy it." And I'm like, "Great!" Wow, what are the odds? <laughs> I know it was, it was wild. It was really cool, but that's what I mean. You know, always be kind because you never know, you never know who you're going to meet, and it, it, it's just crazy how small the world actually is. Yeah. And I, I would add to that too, like having traveled to a lot of different places when you, for me, like it helps me start conversations with people and, and be able to relate to people in a more personal way because I'm like, Oh, I went to, I studied abroad in Australia. And they're like, Oh my gosh. Like I did, I did too. Like, and then you start talking and I don't know, it's, it's just cool to, to make connections that way. Absolutely. And to, to be able to establish connections and rapport with somebody and, or <clears throat> when if people are going somewhere to be able to say, oh, you got to go here. Like this is the mm -hmm. coolest, uh, you know, off the beaten path place, but it's so great. I agree. I find it's also, it's a good, it's a good icebreaker or conversation starter. It's better talking like the weather, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For, for me, who is not, uh, not an extrovert at all. It's, uh, it gives me a lot to fall back on. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, that's funny. Um, well, Catherine, uh, any other stories that you want to share? Oh, a good, uh, good question. Honestly, <laughs> I, I was able to share all of them. I think for me, I'm just, I really got my travel bug and, and wanderlust from my grandmother and seeing her travel while I was still in high school. And I was like, that's awesome. She's awesome. I want to do that someday. And then going to travel with her and then just really branching out and like happening to find FTLO uh, back in 2018 and still be able to have met so many wonderful people. Like, just as you said, like it really is like like-minded individuals who want to connect, who want to learn, who want to um, be open to new experiences. It's just been incredible. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I always have a thousand you know, fun travel stories, but that I think that's not the bulk of it. So, yeah. no, it's, it's it's been fun. I, I'm curious, are you gonna be able to go on every single one of the FTLO trips? Oh, I could if I haven't already been there. The one I'm also really wanting to do is Japan. Mm. So, love, I'm I'm dying to go to Japan. Um, so maybe that one, but I'm really like, again. I know we're holding out for Turkey 2024. That really oh. is my next like I really want to go to Turkey so yeah yeah I'm with you on that one <laughs> you get there. You get there, Kyle yeah we'll, we'll make it happen we will. but it's so I'm awesome go to Cuba, go to Turkey oh what'd you say if we could go to Cuba we can go to Turkey correct oh yeah I agree I mean obviously the, the earthquakes aren't great but yes yeah. I I'm that would be such a culturally enriching incredible experience so i am looking forward to it and i'm keeping my fingers crossed <laughs> awesome well uh catherine any last like tips tricks or anything else that you want to share 
Um, my, the last thing I would only say is just, you know, have an open mind and a go with the flow attitude with traveling. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people you connect with that you wouldn't have met otherwise and meet locals and hear their stories. It's just amazing. So that's all. Go with the flow. <laughs> I, I love it. hundred percent agree. Uh, well, Catherine, thank you so much. I appreciate the time. I really enjoyed talking travel with you and, uh, Hope to see you somewhere around the world soon. Me too. I can't wait for our next adventure. I'm so excited. Looking forward to it. Right. Thanks, Kyle. This is awesome. Yep. I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. Kyle here. If you enjoyed today's show and want more, you can always check out every episode on Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, and now Amazon Music as well. Just search for Our Travel Experiences on any of those platforms and it will pop up. You can also find everything all in one place on my website, OurTravelExp.com. And if you want to see my travel pictures as well as travel pictures from guests on the show, you can check them out on Instagram. The page is called Our Travel Experiences Podcast. And if you want to share your own pictures on the Instagram page or be a guest on the podcast, you can message me via that Instagram page or email me at our travel experiences at outlook.com. I would love to see your pictures and hear about your travel experiences. So please send them my way. And if that isn't enough for you, make sure to check out my weekly YouTube show from around the world Fridays. Every Friday, I'm taking five to 10 minutes to answer questions from listeners, share some souvenirs that I bought over the years, um, share my postcards over the years that I've accumulated, or share videos and pictures from one particular city or country that I visited, and so much more. So check it out, guys. You won't be disappointed. And uh, make sure you go subscribe to that as well. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you somewhere around the world soon.